Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite Virgo, your favorite host with the most is Candy and created by Candy. And as you can see from the title of today's video, we're gonna be talking all about typography within design. If you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you, oh, what it do, baby? This video is a part of my Design Decoded series that I have started over here on my channel where I basically break down everything you need to know Starting off as a graphic designer, so you can avoid a lot of mistakes that a lot of new graphic designers make. So I have all these videos in a playlist that you can go ahead and hop over and binge watch after watching this video and get all the tea for the free because like it's right there. <laughs> So before we hop into font families, the importance of this, that, and the third font licensing, let's talk about what is typography in design. So in the graphic design world, typography refers to the design and arrangement of text elements to communicate a message effectively and aesthetically. The selection of fonts, their sizes, spacing, alignment, and overall layout within the design. So if you haven't already, after watching this video all the way through, I think you should hop over to the fundamentals of design because I speak on spacing, alignment, hierarchy, layout, all the things that are tied into basically typography, it's important, how to use it, etc. right? Typography and design involves not only making text readable, but also using it as a visual element to evoke emotions, to convey its brand identity and to guide the viewer's attention. It's about finding the right balance between creativity and functionality to enhance the overall visual appeal and effectiveness of the design. Text is very important. Okay, text is not only, I mean, aside from the fact that like we read, <laughs> text is important because it can convey urgency. It can guide the viewer's eyes and attention to what you need it to, which can then convey urgency, like a 70% off sale. I speak on this in the fundamentals of design video as well. I'll use the same example from that video. Red background, white letters, big bold font, 70% off sale, going out of business soon. Like you wanna use big bold fonts to convey that urgency. Like, hey, this is this is the real deal. You need, a, you need to get on this. This is the real deal. You need to get on this sale now. It's 70% off. We're going out of business. Hurry, 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 okay? Hurry while supplies last, as they love to say. <laughs> so I think it's very important that not only do you know about typography and design, but to know the font families, the main font families. Now, these are just some of the font families. They are not all. If you look up font families, I'm pretty sure you get like an extensive list, but I'm gonna tell you the ones that are the most commonly used font families and the ones that I really think you should get very familiar with when you are designing. So the most commonly used or named font families are serif, sans serif, slave serif, and calligraphy. So let's just go through these font families really quickly. I'm gonna give you a quick description so you get a better understanding of each font family, what they use for, etc. cetera, all right? So first we have serif. Serif fonts are characterized by small decorative strokes or lines, aka serif, attached to the ends of the characters. These serifs give serif fonts a traditional formal or elegant appearance, all right? So as a designer, I'm gonna tell you right now, when people say classy, elegant, fancy, schmancy, they mean serif. Serif fonts are commonly used for body text and printed materials such as books, newspapers, and magazines. So just go grab a book and you can probably, not all, but just find a book, you can probably find a serif font. If it's not serif, then it is sans serif, all right? So next we have sans serif font. So sans serif fonts do not have serifs, giving them a clean and modern and straightforward appearance. They are characterized by the simplicity and the legibility. A majority of what we see on a daily basis is a sans serif font. Unless you see that little fancy schmancy, just think little Kirk look at the end, almost like a curtsy. Think of a curtsy, okay? If you don't see the curtsy on the letter, it is sans serif, point blank period, all right? So sans serif fonts are widely used for digital content, headings, online article websites, etc. So if you are a web developer, I highly recommend using sans serif fonts as they are very simple, they are very clean, and they are very, very legible. They're more likely to be legible than a serif font because of the little curtsies at the end. The curtsies kind of come together and it makes it look a little like, I don't know what's going on here. 
Next, we have a Slave Serif. So Slave Serif fonts have a thick, bold-like serif that are more prominent and squared off than those found in traditional serif fonts. So just think of more of like a typewriter. Like they have the curtsy, but they're they're not as sharp at that little. Like think of like a uh, whatever curtsy as Slave Serif, just kind of like and then a serif font is more like delicate, you know, very pointy at the end most times. Not always, but majority of the times it's gonna be very pointy at the end, all right? So that way you can distinguish the two from each other. And last but not least, we have calligraphy. Calligraphy fonts mimic the elegant and flowing strokes of handwritten calligraphy. They often feature decorative flourishes and varying line thickness, creating a sophisticated and artsy look. So just think cursive with a left swipe. That is what calligraphy is. Each font family has its own distinct characteristics and is suited to different types of design projects and contexts. So you're not gonna use calligraphy for a baby shower. You're not gonna use calligraphy for a boutique and you're like, oh, but the client is like, I want something very elegant, clean and sleek. You're not gonna use calligraphy. All right, you're probably gonna wanna go for a serif, maybe for the baby shower, a sans serif font that's more of like a handwritten and cute fun little you know kind of giving that baby young youthful feel so now let's talk about font selection like when you should choose certain fonts for certain things right so when you are choosing fonts whether that be for a passion project or for an actual client these are five things that i want you to keep in mind all right first things first is the actual font choice so as a graphic designer you want to choose the font that best conveys the message the mood the aesthetic all that wrapped up in one all right so second is spacing spacing is something that i speak on in my fundamentals of design video i'll have it linked down below because i keep referring to it but it will be in the design decoded series playlist but spacing is something that is so, 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 so very important. I feel like overlooked when selecting fonts and or using fonts in your project. The third is hierarchy. Hierarchy. So what is the most important thing that you want them to know about said project, said design, said website? What is it? Again, I'm going to refer to the red background with the white letter example. The most important thing is they want people to know that they're 70% off. 70%. Off, all right they want you to know that no matter what else is going on what else may be on sale may not be on sale they want you to know that 70% off there's something 70% off so come on down come on see what we got going on down here all right hierarchy what is the most important and how are you going to convey that message with the font style that you have selected so the fourth is consistency. So basically using, let's say two to three fonts all throughout the design. Like you don't want to choose a bunch of different fonts, like a different font for every single line, paragraph, title, whatever. Mentally, you're gonna like throw the reader off. Like, girl, what is going on here? I don't know, but I don't care. I'm going on about my business. Please remember people's attention span. Everybody's attention span is short. Shout out to TikTok. All right, all right. And last but not least is legibility. Like, can we even read the font? I know some fonts, they look really, really nice. You know, the examples that they present, you know, the, they're like, oh, this font is nice. But then when you actually type up what you're trying to type up and the font, does it look good? Can we even read it? Do we understand it? You know, <laughs> please make sure your fonts are legible, okay? Thank you. <laughs> So this next topic is something that I'm always asked about and it was something that I had to do my own research on because um, truth be told, I didn't understand it at first either. When I went font shopping, looking around, whatever, I was just like, if it's cute, I don't care if it says for personal use, 100% free or whatever else. If I see it, I like it, I want it, I got it. And I quickly learned there's different font licensing and I'm gonna break them down to you as simply as possible so you can understand what it means when you see certain things when you are downloading or purchasing fonts, all right? So first we have free for personal use. This is the one I think is the most familiar with everybody. If you're watching this video and you're a designer and you've seen a free for personal use font. To be honest, if you ask me, we go on websites like the font 1001 free fonts or whatever it is, most of the really cute fonts are free for personal use and that really grinds my gears, so you know. But I mean, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But yes, first we have free for personal use. So free for personal use fonts are fonts that can be used without charge for personal projects, personal 
project. So let's just say you do a passion project. It is 100% just you came up with the idea or you follow Black Girl Briefs and you got the idea. That is 100% you doing a personal project, all right? You're not turning this into a template. You're not selling it to anyone. It is not for a client. It is for you, free for personal use. Now, please keep in mind that when you are on a website like Define and you see these free for personal use fonts, be sure to click the actual font that will then take you to the font page and Oftentimes, if you scroll down, you'll see that you can purchase the font to use outside of just a free for personal use. Typically, you cannot use these fonts for any commercial purposes, such as creating items to sell or promoting a business. If you want to use the fonts for any commercial project, you usually need to purchase a license or use a font that explicitly allows commercial use. So next we have 100% free fonts. So 100% free fonts are fonts that are completely free to use for both personal personal and commercial purposes without any restrictions or limitations. So this means you can download it and do what you want to do. Download it and have fun. If it says 100% free and it's a cute little fonty font, it's a cute little calligraphy font, it's a cute sans serif font, you got you a gem. So these fonts are often under licenses such as SIL Open Font License or OFL or Creative Commons Zero, which is CCO or CC Zero, to use, modify, and distribute the fonts freely without any requirements for attribution or payment. So you can literally do what you wanna do with these fonts. Now me being the creative that I am, don't just go download people fonts and like resell them or tweak them and sell them. Don't, don't, don't be that guy, but you're free to do it if you want to, okay? If it says 100% free, again, Please be sure, I'm gonna say this after every time, please be sure to click on the font, go to the font page and make sure you read the page. And when you download the font and you, you know, extract the zip folder, read the, if it has like a license or something in there, read it, please read it, okay? So the next we have public domain. So fonts in the public domain are not protected by copyright and are freely available for anyone to use, modify, and distribute without restriction. They may have entered the public domain because their copyright has expired or they were explicitly released into the public domain by the original creator. So this is very similar to 100% free. You can download it and do what you wanna do. It's for the public. It's for everybody, all right? Next, we have a general public license or GPL. So the GPL is a copyleft license that grants users the freedom to use, modify, and distribute software, including fonts, under certain condition. When a font is licensed under the GPL, users are typically allowed to use the font for any purpose, modify and distribute their modifications as long as they make the source code available and distribute it under the GPL license. So in other words, you can pretty, I wouldn't say pretty much do the same as like the public domain as far as just taking it and do what you want to do. You can, but you have certain conditions. So I feel like this is another one of those licenses where just please read. Reading is fundamental. Make sure you read, read, read. So these licenses mentioned are just a few. They are not all the font licenses, but they're the most common ones that you're going to see whether you are on Invader Market, the font.com, or creative market or something like that, you're gonna see one of these type of like OFL, GPL, some kind of code or 100% free. You're gonna see it somewhere in there, okay? But my biggest thing with this is no matter what the font licensing says, read, do your homework, reading's fundamental. Please read, please read, 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 read. It's essential to carefully review the terms of the font license agreement to understand what is permitted and what restrictions apply before using a font any project, especially commercial projects, anything commercial. Violating font licensing agreements can lead to legal consequences, so it is crucial to do the reading, do your homework. You may think people are not lurking, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you a quick little story from experience. I used to get all of my photos from Pinterest. I didn't know what a stock photo was. I ain't know nothing about no copy, nothing. I knew nothing. All right, I would get my photos off of Pinterest. And guess what? The person in one of my photos that I used found me. How did she find me? I have no idea. She found me and she was like, hey, can you take this down? Whatever, da, da, da. I took it down. I never posted it back up again. I never used her photos again. And from that moment on, I was like, I have to figure out how to find photos because all I knew at the time was paying for stock photos and I did not know there were 
sites with free stock photos available and that is when I fell down the rabbit hole of free stock photos and I've never looked back. I've paid for stock photos here and there but like I'm a freebie girly so fell down the rabbit hole and ever since I have only used photos from free sites or ones I have paid for. So if you see any of my designs whether it's on my Instagram, my website or any design tutorial I use here it is a stock photo it is not AI stock photo it's a stock photo that I found somewhere but I say all that to say that you think people are not watching or you think people are not gonna find you or whatever and yeah they will yes they will they will find you okay at least she was nice about it she sent me a DM she didn't blast me in the comments or anything I took it down and that was that nobody ever knew about it this happened in like 2020 2021 maybe I don't know, was, I think it was 2020. So yeah, please be sure to read. Please be sure you're using things the correct way. You think people are not watching. They have all kinds of softwares that they can like upload things, and like scan the internet for anything. You think that reverse search image is the only thing available? Think again. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, comment them down below. And at the end of this series, I'll be answering all of the questions that you guys ask me about different things and if you took something away from this wait let me say this if you understand fonts and all that good stuff now go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and comment an orange heart down below now we're gonna talk about font pairings and stuff like that girl hold on we're gonna talk about it in another video but right now i just had to get important stuff out font licensing the legal stuff because i don't want y'all to get in trouble it's 2024 and they are not playing out here they're cracking down i don't want y'all to get in trouble i want y'all to win i love you guys so very much i'll see you in the next video okay bye